to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Blasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine. I am your host, of course, Christine, and I'm so very happy that you joined me today because my guest is so awesome. Demi Baldwin is an intuitive lifestyle coach and spiritual teacher. She's also an inspiration and motivational leader, a love and esteem coach, ascension guide, certified peer support specialist counselor, fashion and beauty consultant. And if that wasn't enough, she's also the CEO of a very cool company called Are You Fashionable Accessories, available at areyoufashionable.com. Her goal is to raise conscious awareness and to assist the collective in increasing their consciousness, which if you've been listening to this program, you know that's what I'm all about, which ultimately, of course, results in co-creation of the reality of our desire. Demi is currently pursuing her passion to establish a worldwide organization that will focus on healing retreats globally. So that means all over the world doing these wonderful healing retreats. We're going to talk more about that and how you can heal the mind, the body, the soul, and create a life of balance between the feminine and masculine. And a little bit of a backstory for you listeners before we bring Demi on. I was on Instagram uh, one day. If you need to know my handle, it's at Out of the Box Radio. And I stumbled across Demi's Instagram page, which is Love Light Fairy. Yes, Love Light Fairy. And I was just struck with that lightning bolt that, that sort of happens when I know that someone needs to be on the show and my audience needs to hear from them. And so in addition to posting inspirational and transformational, very provoking uh, posts, she exudes this wonderful energy about her. And for whatever magical reason, the universe told me she had to come on and be heard. And I I think you'll agree after you, you hear from her. So I want to welcome to the program Demi Baldwin. Demi, I'm sorry for that very long intro, but you deserve it. Yay! Hi, you guys. It's a pleasure to be on the show tonight, Christine. I'm really so excited about being on here tonight. And we have some amazing things that we're going to share with everyone. And we are. And and, and I, I just I first want to let our listeners know, where where are you from? Where did you originate from? Because it's always about, you know, I'm I I'm uh, from the Los Angeles area. Back in the 60s, I was born in this crazy town and that of course uh the international flair of that all um uh definitely brought me to where i am today and and the people that were surrounding me where where do you hail from where are you from i live in charlotte north carolina which is home of the carolina panthers which is cam newton Oh uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's actually, I'm just, it's a quite nice city here, um, and it's just, it's an amazing place to come, and I, I love being here. So Charlotte, North Carolina, is where I'm from. Now let's talk to our to our listeners about you're an intuitive lifestyle coach and spiritual teacher. Well, that that can mean a lot, right? So let's mm-hmm. talk about what what specific uh, specific things that you bring. <laughs> to people, to your clients, to friends, to co-workers? Um, what are some of the specific things that you're bringing to them and their lives that probably that they did not know about before or they hadn't been conscious of? Yeah, basically, so um, as, an, as a spiritual teacher, I basically just teach people about spiritual life. And basically, I just go off of my spiritual journey and just kind of 
you know, go over some things that I've been through in this spiritual journey since I've awakened and um, just help people elevate their consciousness to see um, what's going on in this 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 world right now. Also, as far as my intuitive um, as, as being an intuitive, I'm just pretty much very in tune with the universe and just making sure that um, I stay in tune and aligned and move in purpose and just making sure that I assist people in so many different things. I have so many things that I offer people. So um, my main goal is just, like I said, to make sure that I elevate consciousness and just make sure that people understand what we're going through, because a lot of people are awakening at this present time. Yes, they are. At, at the same time that people are awakening, there's a lot going on, like you said. There's a lot going on. And for those who need a little explaining um, about what's going on, let's talk about that. Um, wow. Wow. Oh, you can just, whatever you look. Uh, um. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, so basically, right now, we're in a process right now where um, we're moving out of different a different age. We're moving from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. And every 2,000 years, um, we move out of astrology sign, which, which, like I said, we just moved out of age of Aquarius and moving out of the age of um, to the age of Aquarius, which is a really great sign. Um, to me, that age of Pisces was a lot more of the 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 veil where a lot of things was hitting. A lot of things are being um, revealed right now, and a lot of things is pretty much moving in the direction of where this earth is really supposed to be. Um, and I'm just excited about us moving there. Now, we are all on different levels of consciousness. So um, that age of the age of uh, a Pisces kind of to me was more of a, like a 3D type of mentality, um, three dimensional when I say 3D, you guys. Um, but a lot of us, like I said, we're moving from a 3D mentality to consciousness, um, to a 4D, to a 5D consciousness of bliss. So um, it's just it's just where you are um, mentally and consciously where you are there is is what it's all about. And with that growth, right, going from 3D to 4D, some people maybe are in 4D, working in 4D and going yeah. on. There's growing pains like, you know, if, uh, if you're, you know, a, a teenager, right, or a preteen, if you're a tween, you're going in through, there's hormones, there's uncomfortableness going on. Let's talk about those growing pains um, and whether you like it or not, <laughs> whether you, whether you, whether you prepared, whether you understand yourself or not, there will be those growing pains, right? Yes, yes. So what has happened? Well, excuse me. What has happened previously? Being in that three D consciousness, that 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 age of Pisces, that veil that I was talking about. We have been in living in a world of illusions, pretty much. Um, a lot of things have been hidden from us, and you know, right now everything's being revealed. So can't nothing be revealed anymore. So we have to literally reprogram our minds to get up, get excuse me, get out of that state of consciousness because we've been told a lot of things that wasn't true. So with those growing pains, we have to literally purge ourselves from that old mentality and pretty much, you know, start all over again and recreate our own realities in the life that we're really supposed to be living in. So during those times, we go through purging processes where we have to literally um, clear and purge some things that was pretty much taught to us um, in generations and um, things like that. So we have to literally um, raise our consciousness and reprogram all over again, which is kind of tough, you know. So we, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, with that, uh, obviously, since you cannot move into a space where there is more, you know, a lot of light and um, and and be lighter in yourself in your being. You can't really do that until you get rid of the fears, right? And the shadow self, or at least at least face the fears and the shadow selves. But there's also right. the victim mentality that comes along and the blame um, right. and, and all of that. And when I think about that uh, fear, shame, 
the shadow self, the victim mentality, um, guilt, uh, whatever, all those, those emotions. I actually, I can, I don't know about you, but like I can see and feel like a kind of almost like a dark goo, like a, like a black gooey substance almost. Exactly. Yes. It's, oh God, it's, it's horrible, you know? Um, but it's okay because we all have it. Right. Right. We're going to be okay because we're, especially the people that are moving in their purposes and that are moving, that are light workers out here that are really moving into what they need to be that dark gloom, the light all always overpowers the dark. So we're going to win this. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to win this. No matter, no matter what, and and uh, the what we've been experiencing lately. And now we we had uh, talked just before we went on air. We had just mm-hmm. mentioned briefly uh, Mercury, Mercury, uh, Mercury being in retrograde, and which yeah. it seems does it does does it seem to you that Mercury is like always in retrograde, or is it like been a lot in retrograde this year, or? Is it just it me? It seems like it's, it's always in that, but it really not. It's just certain period of times. It is. It does be in retro, retrograde a lot more than a lot of the other planets. I know we just recently had Venus just go direct. When I say direct, you guys, that means go back in a direction. Mercury, Mercury retrograde um, is basically... Um, the apparent motion of a planet in a direction opposite to the other bodies within a system. So basically if a planet is going forward, Mercury is literally going backwards. It's going the opposite direction. So, which is causes a lot of, um, emotions when it comes to our our universe and things like that you know the energies that we receive from these planets. So it's at one period of time, maybe about, um, I think maybe 60 days or so ago, we had maybe like six or seven different planets in in retrograde. But Mercury is the toughest one for me. I just, it sucks to me, literally. <laughs> I hate Metro. I hate it. I why, really do. Why, why do you say that with Mercury? Is it, it's uh, because we we need to communicate as humans, right? And, and yes. Mercury has a lot to do with communication. Am I right? Definitely, definitely the way we communicate with each other. Um, Really, Mercury comes to really teach us those lessons that we really need to learn and learn how to, um, like you said, communicate with each other um, and and, and learn those lessons. And and the next retrograde comes around. You shouldn't be going through that same thing that you went through that past one, pretty much. Uh, But what if it's like Groundhog Day and you go through the same thing over and over and over again? And you're going to keep going through that same thing over and over again until you learn that lesson, pretty much. <laughs> it's sad, but I mean, Now, you yeah. you had mentioned Venus was in retrograde not too long ago. Now, Venus is, is, is it my understanding that that's um, somewhat about um, our love, the how, our, our, how we communicate through love? Is that- yes, it has a lot to do how we, um, like you said, pretty much you were right on with that, communicate with love and just making sure that, you know, um, we're in the proper relationships. A lot of times we get into a lot of relationships and things like that, and we're not even supposed to be in those, you know, mm-hmm. we're very emotional human beings, you know, no, um, and it's okay. Um, that me. Really? That way, but, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I, I said, no, really? Demi. Yeah, we're very emotional human beings, but that's the part of our one of our soul lessons is to learn these things. That's what we came here to do is to learn these lessons through astrology, through spirituality, all of that. So, um, yeah. So with Venus retrograde, you know, being able to um, learn and acquire from the lessons from that, you know, people that we love, you know, our relationships with our family, not just, you know, uh, relationship with our partners, but just relationship with our families as well. Right, right. It's, so it's it's all it's all coming. I, I like to think about retrogrades as uh, also being just kind of put in your face, so to speak. Now, now today's been a, a, a particular, you know, retrograde Mercury, beautiful thing. Whereas every bit of communication, every yes. I mean. It doesn't matter. I could have spelled it out. A, B, C, D, you do A, B, C, D. You know, the communication, there was breakdowns left and right and um, and mess ups and slip slip ups and mishaps and all, all of that stuff. And what I gained from that and it and it it does take you, you. You do have to step away from life for a split second. But what mm-hmm. I take what I take away from that when it does happen is that it's also testing my skills at adapting. Mm-hmm. 
It's called adaptation. Right. You're on point. Basically, what I'm learning with the retrogrades pretty much is when a situation come up and this is with everything, even our soul lessons, we have to learn how to react to certain situations. And sometimes some of the situations that we go to can that we go through can be very, very, very hard, you know, but that's when that reprogramming our mind comes in and we just have to, okay, let it click in and say, okay. All right, let me move in love instead of out of uh, emotions. Because, you know, emotions is um, a lot of times is ego. So we have to really let go of the ego, which is ego is pretty much a program that we have to reprogram ourselves and get, you know, to let go of too. We must learn to not give into it and let ego and give ego our power. So that's what I'm learning. It's like Lego the ego, Lego the ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and and these um yeah 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 what i find is a challenge and i catch myself i mean i'm not saying this about nobody else but even right. just myself is that mm-hmm. when you know and you could read all the kumbaya books you want to you could burn all the nag champa incense you want you can have your meditational tapes and your whatever your beads all that stuff but right. when when you're triggered, right, in a trigger, yeah. meaning like, you know, um, something comes up in life that triggers your automatic response, your reaction out of fear, out of and sometimes, you know, y- you know, those things actually kept you alive, maybe in uh, maybe in another lifetime or maybe in this lifetime that, it, you know, that kind of a quick reaction kept you alive. But when you have that trigger response to something that someone says or someone does it takes a great deal, and I can't wait till we get. I, well, I, I'll speak for myself. I can't wait till I get to the point in my life where um, I I actually pause before I react to to certain things, right? But yeah, we we tend to when we have a trigger because it's a deep emotional trigger, right? That yes. that brings out that response in us, and we will either say or do things that we really we're going to regret later or we don't really mean, but it's out of that fear uh, mentality. I don't know if you've had much experience with, um, with past life or exploring past lives, but if you have let our listeners know if you, if you've had any experience with that, because I find that fascinating too, about those deep triggers that are not just from this lifetime and our childhood, which a lot of stuff happens, but also from our, our past lives. Yeah, I actually haven't really went um, deep into that part of my spiritual journey yet with past life regressions or things of that nature. I think I'm not quite ready for that yet, but um, I've been, you know, it's funny that you say that because I have been having that on my spirit to get a past life regression um, session done with someone to pretty much, um, you know, find out, you know, dig deep about our past my past, my past life and just kind of dig deeper so I can know how to move more in my future. You know, it really helps really to tell you the truth, but I don't think I'm ready for it yet. <laughs> well, when you are, let me know. I've got, I've got somebody that I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that, that, that okay, that's amazing. That's, awesome. that's really amazing because what I find is that the, the, this is, this sounds so crazy, but it's not. Okay. It, what it, what I've found is that our past lives, because there's, there's, there's many, and I don't, and I don't even say so much that there's been many, like in a past tense, that these past lives, even though they're called past lives, it's like, you know, as you know, if you're not, you're not in a three dimensional world, right? So right. you have these lives that you're living simultaneously to this life. This life right now, I'm conscious of, and I'm like, okay, I'm 54 right. years old. Um, okay. I'm, I live in this particular uh, geography, geographical area. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, uh, my parents are blank and blank. My grandparents are blank and blank. Okay, that's right. just one, let's say, record on a spindle. Okay, mm-hmm. like a, a a nice big record on a spindle. Well, those other records underneath it are still also playing at the same time. And then you have records on top of that, which could be your future lives or future selves. So what I've found is that when you're able to tap into a quote unquote past life or another life of that you're you're living and mm-hmm. heal those consciously go in it's like being a surgeon and going in 
and basically healing those wounds that happen that you're not even conscious of. You don't even know. But right. able to heal those wounds that in your current life, because mm-hmm. it's all the same thing. It's whatever's happened back then or in that other lifetime is happening now to see if you if you're able to um, experience compassion for another human being, if you're able to forgive, if you're able, you know, all, all of those things. It's not just this one uh, game that we're playing, so to speak. So right. I, I, I love, I think it's just phenomenal um, about uh, past lives and future lives and then the current life and how they are all kind of blending together. I love right. that subject matter so much. Yeah, so how I look at it and, and how I, what I've studied about it pretty much, much is how we look at things here is linear. Everything here yes. is just pretty much linear. Everything else, like, um, you know, as far as like our past lives and things of th- that nature is quantum. So we have to look at it in a different perspective when it comes to things. But like you said, you know, we have to go in and just pretty much, you know, that's why meditation is really awesome. And I promote, you know, and I, you know, anyone to do meditation, because when you meditate, you can literally go into those areas of those places where you have those areas that need to be healed, you know, and, 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 and you can see those things and, and take that and bring it back here in the physical body and, and heal those things and work those things out and just understand that, you know, this is something I need to, to learn, or this is something I need to heal from so that I can move to that next level, um, in the next, whatever, you know, lifespan or whatever the case may be. Mm, mm-hmm. And and the uh, the amazing thing about being alive right now, Demi, is that we have a lot of tools uh, available to us that we didn't we didn't have 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Um, and 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 I think you're so right when you had said earlier that um, that we're coming to an age to we're coming to a space maybe it's moving into that the uh, was it we're moving into Aquarius is that what you were saying? We're moving moving out of the age of Pisces um, into the age of Aquarius. Exactly. So the 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 thing about that is that um, the secrets, the dirty little secrets, the the injustices, things like that are coming. They're bubbling to the top. You can just take a look. Just turn on your television. Well, don't turn it on very long. I don't. I don't, I don't really watch. Yeah. I don't watch TV, but yeah, but you, but you will see you'll see everything that's going. On. Look at the Catholic Church, right? Look yes, at look yes, at yes. look at the politicians. Look at things. Yeah. They're just it's it, it just. I think it's because we're also vibrating at a level. Yes, that lies and deceit and harm and injustice. Yes, can't it just can't survive. It can't be on the same place. So it is bubbling up. And some people will look at that and they'll think everything's rotten, right? They'll go, Oh my God, the world's such a scary place. It's such a horrible place. But that's, that's not necessarily so, right? No, basically. Yes. Uh, It's just, see, we're just, like you said, we're, we're all on to me, you know, the best way that I can um, pretty much explain it is that we're all on different levels of consciousness, you know, and and it it looks bad, but um, you know, some things that, that are people, that people that are on like a higher consciousness, maybe like a 4D or or 5D blissful um, consciousness, something that they um, see someone else going through, on a 3D mentality consciousness may not be, they may not be able to feel it the way that, um, that we do, you know, we may look at it in a different perspective than how they do. You see what I'm saying? Mm So, um, that's how I, I, I look at it. You know, it's not that we're not going to be able to see these things. Like you said, it's all over the news. I just don't, um, you know, engage myself in that because what it'll do is you'll get into that and then you're pretty much, you adapt that emotion of that fear and then that fear will sink in. And once that fear sinks in, you, you'll get to lower your vibration back down to that 3D mentality again. Then you're caught up in that loop. It's like you're going over and over and over and over again instead of just holding that vibration at the higher vibration, you know. So it's very hard, but um, let me not say that again. I, I'm working on that too just learning to uh be careful with the things that i say it is not hard you just have to reprogram your mind to think that it's not yes and we're all we're all learning i like i like to equate it to like you know we're like all babies that are just 
we're going from the crawling phase to standing up. And once we stand up, we're going to take off and run. But right. in the meantime, <laughs> we're kind of stumbling. And, and this is the beautiful thing about the human experience, right? We are divine. Right. We come into these, you know, uh, you know, tiny bodies com- compared to what we are, right, on a soul level. We're, we've got all this coming into this little tiny body, and we're trying to manipulate and work our way through this lifespan that we have. And we're uh, we're given sort of this uh, menu, I guess you'd say, of, of things that we're going to be experiencing and how we react to those. And that's the key is the, the yeah. way that we handle because. I've I've met people who have been through some really wow just you know at a very young age have experienced some things that are so wild like traumatic. like like yeah. very traumatic exactly mm-hmm. traumatic and be it either at the hands of their parents who are listen when you come into this world you 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 know there's yeah. only their your parents are god right they, that's your mm-hmm. world either from the hands of their parents or at a very young age experience something um, like a physical ailment or a, an accident. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is that there, um, there is something within the spirit of some of these folks that I've met along the way that because they've experienced that pain or that suffering, it has brought out actually such a, beautiful um, energy about them, a beautiful light about them. Mm-hmm. Whereas most people, if they walk by and they saw, or if they heard your story, they go, oh, that's horrible that that happened to you, or they feel, you know, um, sad for you. But they have this beautiful energy about what it is to feel suffering. Wow. Yeah. it's That's so true because... I, I just feel like that that suffering is 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 a soul lesson or a, a test or something we have to go through. I mean, I can literally say that as a testimony as well too, because I've not always been where I am today. Um, if I wasn't, you know, where I am today, I had to go through a lot of things too. Some really, I went through. They call it the dark night of the soul. Dark night um, of the soul. So, yes. Yeah, it's when you go through that really, really dark place in your life and you're like, oh, my God. But that that lesson or that 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 issue that you're going through at that particular time is is pretty much just just teaching you a lesson. And so what you have to do is wrap your mind subconsciously around that and and understand that it, you went through it for a reason so that it can bring you out on top to make you a better person. And I'm so grateful where I am today for the things that I went through yes it was very tough I, I went I was homeless um I, I went from you know uh being without a car and and, and all kinds of horrible things and and, and, and losing a child and mm. and all kinds of things being in a domestic violence relationship you know I've been I went through some really horrible things but I wouldn't be where I am today if I did not go through those things so I'm just grateful that I did go through those things you know and I I just want to just be, a, be 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 able to tell as many people as possible that you are going to go through those things but it's just the key is not staying there and just not staying down just being able to get right back up and just understand that you, you're going to go through those things and get right back up it's just something you just have to go through you know it's not going to be it's not going to always be all sugar honey iced tea all the time you know yes. <laughs> so, to speak. so you know, sugar honey iced tea like <laughs> well you and 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 the thing is too is that when you if you have the wherewithal to know that 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 there is a reason behind the suffering Yes. Because that's the whole thing. When you're in it, it's really hard to think that way, Demi. It's it is. It's like yes, it why is. you know why have thou forsaken me type thing? Yes, you know, um, because the pain of of I can't imagine the pain of losing a child, um, yes. or or um, just not knowing where your next you know where your next meal is, or mm-hmm. or having that fear of being safe. You know, the safety of you know you're in a home. Uh, and you don't know if that person that's coming home is going to hurt you or not. And so many people do, you know, they, they experience that. And I can understand, and I will say this, I can understand why some people feel the need to escape that through, yes. through yes. whatever it is that they mm-hmm. need to, to escape that. 
but as um as someone who has had my own pain and suffering um mm-hmm. i will tell you that with each heartache the heart for some amazing reason uh, the capacity to love it increases yes it does now it could it go does. the other way it could it could easily go the other way and 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 that's why I, you know i i can understand that too i can understand people being bitter i can understand people not i can understand that um yes, it's it's human i mean people got to understand too that that we're human you know you're we're spiritual beings having a human experience the key to when you're awakening is you have to expand your heart and let go of that 3d consciousness which is your ego you have to let it go you know you can't hold on to that 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 um that fear and that 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 grudge against that person that may have did you wrong you can't hold on to that because the longer that you hold on to it the longer it's going to keep you in that lower vibrational frequency which is that 3d ego mentality you have to expand your heart you have to love that's why um um you know to those that that believe you know this is my personal belief i believe in my heart that you know um jesus the christ that's why he was the way that he was because he had an expanded heart he was able to uh, trust me he wasn't this all person that people think he was um he was he he didn't play he didn't play that's why he was able to turn those tables over at the synagogue and was just going crazy on people because you know but he still had an expanded heart they did him wrong and he still had an expanded heart he still did the things that he did because he he had an expanded heart and he knew he came here to and um he came here with a purpose. He knew what his purpose was. And he came here and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And I believe in my heart that we we as human beings have that same um you know same right, you know, as human beings to come here and come here with gifts of healing, being able to heal people and be, being able to do the things do the things that we do. It's just you have to tap in, be able to tap into those things and and, and know what your gifts are and know how powerful you are as a quantum creator and to be able to create the the lifestyle that you want. But you yes, you, you do go through those, you know, perilous times or whatever, but you just can't stay there. You know, you just I know that it's hard but you just have to say, you know what, and just believe, you know, a lot of things that we do go through, a lot of people um, like to um, debate that, you know, a lot of things that we go through too, we create that, you know, a lot of things, but some things we don't create, you know, some things, um, but we do a lot of times create things like we be in situations with certain people and we get red flags and we continue to stay in those situations when we know we're not even supposed to be in that situation because we're trying to be, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, but yeah. So, well, and we have that that victim mentality, that story that we mm-hmm. that we that we uh, replay in our minds, right? We replay, replay, replay that, and that comes back into the the ego, free will. right? Mm-hmm. And, ego and the free will too, and free will ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. let's let's expand a little bit on on the ego because that little bugger. Um, <laughs> it seems to be with us wherever we go, Demi. That's the toughest part of your spiritual awakening is your ego. Yes. <laughs> and your ego for for our listeners who are just kind of like, uh, okay, I understand. I kind of understand what what the ego. But if you if you don't mind expanding their their consciousness on that, um, let's talk a little bit about the ego and um, what kind of mischief it will get us into. Yeah, well, pretty much ego is that person that that fights you to go against the things that you know you're not supposed to do. You know, um, when you sit there knowing that you're not supposed to do something, it's that little other person. You know how back in the day we would see the cartoons with the little devil and the little yeah. angel right there? Yeah. <laughs> I think the ego is that little devil that's right there just telling me like, oh, my God, do this. You need to go ahead and do it. You know, <laughs> say that really mean thing. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the ego is is, 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 is to me, like I said, it, the ego is is a program. It's a program that we've been programmed and and we, you know, everything we should be doing is out of love. If it's not out of love and, and an expanded heart, it's the ego. Pretty much, you know. And the ego serves a purpose, right? Um, 
to a certain extent it does, but you just, like I said, with anything else, you just can't let it, you know, you can't stay stuck in that, you know, because right. it's, ego is, is, is an emotion, you know, well, e- ego is a word for ego is an emotion too. So you just can't, can't you can't stay stuck in that because it, the ego will get you in some serious trouble and you'll be, you know, making decisions out of emotions, like how we normally do as humans, you know, we make a lot of decisions out of emotions instead of, you know, making decisions out of things that we really supposed to make decisions out of, which is our, our mind, our, our higher selves, you know, saying, right. okay, because our, or our intuition, we, we, we pretty much say, okay, oh, my ego says go do this, but your, your higher self or your intuition tells you to do this and you don't obey it. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like going, oh, please don't do that. You surely should. Oh, she did that. <laughs> She yeah, did it. Yes. <laughs> uh, you start to co- create that 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 issue or that problem in your life, you know, because you didn't listen to your higher self or your intuition. You went and listened to your ego. So, and then you put yourself in a situation that you created. Right, and then it snowballs from there or spirals right. into right. It just keeps going, right? right. <laughs> yes, it's just such an interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. And and our emotions, because our emotions, um, you know, that's another thing. Our emotions can also fool us uh, a lot of times. Or the, the ego, um, fueled by these emotions, can fool us into seeing things that are not there. It's almost like a drug. Like, it's like, right. you know, there's nothing wrong but the ego and, the f- and fear right and and the ultimate fear whatever it is but it's all usually based in something from uh, a, you know a long 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 time ago somebody hurt you or um or uh let you down and so you apply that uh that experience to other people in other situations but right, right, it does right. it it does seem to um to be this kind of uh little little monster on its own where it can, you know, it can look at it. It can look at a situation or or uh, a scene, and it can see. The, it could. It you could see the best out of the scene, or you could see the worst. And the ego yes. likes to go to the yes. worst. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I really believe in my heart. This is a part of our service on this planet. Is to really, literally. That's one of our. All of us have different soul lessons that we have to learn. But I think one of our main soul purposes as uh, a collective and as individuals is to let go of that ego. I think that's one of our main, everyone has that one soul lesson that we have to learn to let go of. And, and that's letting go of the ego. You know, people don't really, a lot of people don't see it because they're so into it so much, you know, that they don't really see how serious the ego can be, you know, and it's, it's, it's it can be tough, you know, but you know, it'll teach you a lesson too. You'll stop, Trusting in your ego and trusting your intuition more. So, yeah. yes, if you can get yes, if you can get to that point and and be um, cl- uh, clear about it and and realistic and honest. That's what I was trying to find the right. word honest, mm-hmm. honest with ourselves. Boy, that's a tough one. Again, the ego doesn't right. want us to be honest, folks. If you're just tuning in, uh, my name is Christine Blasdale, and you are listening to Out of the Box with Christine. And my guest is the marvelous Demi Baldwin. She is an intuitive lifestyle coach and spiritual teacher. And I do uh, encourage you to go check out her Instagram page. That's how I I stumbled across her. It's all one word: love, light, fairy. Love Light Fairy. She just posts some amazing, amazing stuff. And you'll get to see little snippets to little video snippets of her. Um, Because she, I just, like I said, I just, I had to have you on the show. Um, Demi, I want you to, to, um, if you can, for our listeners, walk us through, uh, walk us through a little bit of a, a typical, let's say a typical day for you. When you're dealing with all of these energies, you're dealing with Mercury in retrograde and Venus in retrograde and a little couple bumps along the road. Just walk us walk us through some of the things that you do or maybe that you can recommend that people do to help center themselves and to come back to get back into that consciousness space or the the raising of our consciousness. What are some things that that you can um, let our listeners know that would be good for them to do? 
Okay. Um, one, some of the ways that I ele um, elevate my consciousness or raise my consciousness or um, raise my vibration is, and I'm doing it, I'm still working on it as of today, is I'm reprogramming my mind like I spoke earlier. Um, I try to speak of only on the things that I um, that I love um, and only thinks of, think of the things that align with who I really am and who I really am. Um, uh, I like to, me personally, um, ways that I can, like if I'm having a really, really tough day, I, I go do things that I love. Like I'll go and, and listen to some music, some some dance music, um, or, or I will sing. Uh, I'll sing songs that I really, really like, but I really like to dance. Dancing raises my vibration very, very, very quick. Um, or... Um, if I'm not in a mood to do that, um, I'll go and just put on my TV uh, 528 Hertz um, music and I'll listen to that. I uh, also take spiritual baths a lot, too. When I feel like my aura, like if I'm out in an in a, in a area and I've had a rough day and I felt like a negative energy may have attacked to my attached to my aura field, I'll go take spiritual baths. And um, I use certain things in my spiritual baths like um, um uh, sea salt is a really good one to use. You can use sea salt. Um, lavender oil is a very calming essential oil that you can use. And I'll put candles on and I'll meditate while I'm in the bathtub. It's very, very, very relaxing because you're relaxing your mind and your body. And I like to meditate there in the tub as well. Um, uh, I also use sage. Uh, I use sage sticks or my favorite is the Palo Santo. Oh, I love uh, that. I love that smell. Yeah, it's my favorite one. So um, Palo Santo is just a uh, wooden, they call it the holy wood. I just pretty much burn it and I'll uh, just pretty much just, you know, take the smoke of it and just kind of go around my head or my body at the bottom of my feet or whatever the case may be. And just, you know, just sage myself, you know, or just, you know, clear my aura field because that's the key. Um, just clearing your aura field and then I feel you will feel so much better. Or just sitting still sometimes, you know, um, you know, with the hustle and bustle of life like that, you're always, you know, your mind is going 100 miles per hour. Sometimes you need to just sit still and just quiet your mind. You know, a lot of people get caught up in, 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 in meditation and how you do meditation and things of that nature. I'm not one of those type of people that do that, you know, because I believe that meditation is is just a way that you could just sit still and quiet your mind. Some people are a little bit more disciplined than others, you know, when it comes to it. They like to sit in the lotus style and just sit there and meditate. Me personally, I like to meditate in the morning and I like to meditate at night before I go to bed. Right, right, right when you're ready to uh, go to sleep or right when you wake up, you know. So that's um, also, uh, you know, doing that shadow work, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, when you're going through these things in your life or whatever, and you face these hiccups in your life or whatever, you have to literally face that. And it's one of the ways that I face that is, OK, I'll go in the mirror uh, and look at myself and I'll say, OK, what could I have done to prevent that? Or how did I react to that situation? And, 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 and you know, I'll face myself and say, did I react in love? Or did I, did I handle this situation properly? You know, I face myself, you know, because a lot of times, like I said, we go through these situations, sometimes we react so fast that we don't realize what we done did. We, we created the situation to make it even worse because we reacted to that situation in, in, a, in a more, you know, a serious you know, you know, manner or whatever. So mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. just having to, you know, and not having to put the blame on someone else all the time. Face that what you did. Uh, okay, what did you do? So those are some of the things that I do. I, um, one of my favorite of all times, and for those who watch my um, Instagram, I love being out in nature because I'm an earth sign. So I like to go out in nature. So I'll go out and I'll meditate in nature. I like to go by the water. I'll go to the lake and just get out in nature. I love to tree hug too. So I get the nice big old trees and I'll just get one a hug i really don't care what people think people be thinking i'm crazy when i'm hugging those trees but i really don't care <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of great energy in the trees right 
right right but a lot of people don't know that because they're so stuck in that 3d consciousness they're like oh she's crazy you know so i mean really you know like i said I, I'm, I'm just at that time in my, in my life where i really really don't care what people think when you get to that level in your spiritual walk you won't care what people think because you just do what you love and not care what people think so right you're just in it, bliss you're in your you're in your in your bliss <laughs> A lot of people what? haven't even been around a tree. They, they, that's the thing, right? They haven't even, they haven't even seen a tree. Uh, and a lot of kids haven't even seen a real tree, like in person, a tree. Um, and that's, that's just uh, part of, uh, part of our, our, so much of our lifestyle. Plus, people are looking at their screens more and more. And while I found you on, yes, I found you on Instagram, which was on my screen, on my, on my phone screen. Um, it, it does drive home the point that we do need to get ourselves back into nature and back into the things. And if you can't get into the nature, what I do like, you had mentioned the, that you listened to the 528 Hertz, um, Mm -hmm. music. Now for, for people who don't, who don't, who don't know the, what now from my understanding, the 528 Hertz is a, is it an octave or a particular pitch? Of, it's the love frequency. The frequency. Um, from what I study, and, and, and it's the love frequency. It's one of the highest vibrations of hertz or whatever. And and people, a lot of use it. A lot of people in music use 432 and up. But from my understanding, four, um, 528 is the love frequency. So it's like a, like a very harmonious um hurts like music or whatever and it's just it sounds awesome i listen to it i have it on right now you probably can't hear it in the back but i have it going you know because it clears energy too so if you have some energy in your room or in your space or in in your home you can play that and it will clear the energy because no energy that is you know that that's on a light lower frequency will not be able to stay in that area with that that frequency you, you understand what i'm saying yes yeah and um and what's funny is that most music most modern music this is what i've this is what i've heard is that uh, most m- m- modern music that you hear, you know, that's on the, they play it on the radio and the top 20 or whatever, is that a frequency that is not harmonious, that it is mm-hmm. not love frequency, that it mm-hmm. is that which, m- you know, makes you irritated and the ego and um, selfish selfishness and all of that. It's in a yeah. frequency that is not the 528 hertz, but at, yeah. a, a, at a different frequency, which is very interesting to me. Um, when it comes to like, wow, we're, it's amazing with everything that we are being exposed to, you know, the, the stuff that's in the water and then the food and the air and the, you know, the spraying and then the, the sounds and the, everything being programmed against our consciousness, programmed against our, our raising our consciousness, right? Uh, Everything is plotted against that, but yet still so many people are, breaking free of that and that's that's one of the most beautiful stories of recent times that is not being told that people are breaking free from religion dogma look at the the catholic church and and organized religions they don't have the hold on people like they used to Yes, because it's bigger than religion. People think, and I mean, me personally, I believe that there's something significant about all of them. There's truth and there's lies in all of them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you just don't get caught up in it because it's bigger than that. We like to put God in this old creator of the universe in this box. And that's not how it, me personally, I don't think that we should do that because he's the creator or he or she, whatever you want to call, is the creator of this universe. So why would you want to put this individual or energy inside of a box because then like, you can control people. <laughs> right, that's the ego. That's it's the greed. The ego. Yeah, it's the greedy. <laughs> it's the greedy. You know, the greedy guy in the back going, "Oh, I can control all these people and make them do what I want. <laughs> I could take over all this land, and I'll say it's for God." Right. Right. And the thing I do is I like to read. Um. Uh. I like to speak aloud. Um. Uh, mantras or affirmations. They're really good. And I like to visualize too. It's, you know, I am is a really good affirmation to say because you're creating. You're using that as an affirmation to speak out, and you're speaking that into the universe, and you're creating that when you say I am. So you're speaking it into it as, as if you already have it. So, so, so uh, what would be a sample, like a, a a sample I am statement that you would be making? Um, I am abundant. Mm, mm-hmm. I am 
quantum creator. <laughs> <laughs> I am a money magnet. If you want money, I'm a money magnet. I have one right here sitting up on my, uh, I have, um, uh, I am a, a multiple sources of pure intent. I am, you know, I am love. I love that one. I say that I a am lot love. because yes. I am love, you know, and um, that's some of the things that I do say is affirmations. So they really, really work because what affirmations do to me personally is they reprogram your mind. So you're just like, okay, and you're speaking them into existence. So you're reprogram you're reprogramming those thoughts, those programs that say mm-hmm. that that I am less than, I don't deserve right. it. Um, right. uh, who are you to? And again, it is it's reprogramming ourselves from um, mm-hmm. from lifetime after lifetime too of these social of these religious dogmas, the beliefs of our uh, parents, uh, the communities in which we you know grew up in, the country that we you know it's, it might be very different uh, growing up in let's say America as it is opposed to growing up in certain parts of the, of the world, right? So you you have all of that, and yet with all of that control, again the spirit that beautiful, um, amazing spirit is 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 rising and um, changing the planet. And and with that, I get we talked about that in the very opening with that. There's some aches and pains and some growing pains with that as well. But it's a really positive place that we're at right now. Don't you think? Right, right, right. The key right now is creating new earth. And how you do that is raise your vibrations and 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 create the life that you want by uh, just pretty much repro- reprogramming your mind, visualizing the things I just said, and basically basically taking initiative. You know, it, like I said, if that's something you like to do, whether it's travel, start traveling. You know, don't wait on someone to you know you know don't wait on someone to say you, you know. Hey, let's go! Just, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, Take a, if you, I mean, if you're going somewhere an hour away, get in your car and just go, you know, this is how you, you, you move from a high lower dimension to a higher dimension is because you're, you're taking action. You're letting the universe know that you are taking action. You believe that you, that these things, that you deserve these things. So, and also something, uh, uh, something that I learned a while ago and it was, I, I don't know if they broached the subject on the, on the secret or not, but. What I've found that really um, is amazing is when mm-hmm. you already you already um, when you already feel and you um, act as if whatever it is that you desire has already happened. So mm-hmm. so if it's an if it's a beautiful loving relationship and let's say you're completely you know j- j- single in your little single studio apartment, then already acting as if you have that loving wonderful um relationship with another human if that's what you if that's what you want already pretending um acting as if it is already happened it's already there yes. that it's already the there yes. yeah it's just that feeling, you know, it's just like you just close your eyes. And how I do, I know that sounds kind of awkward sometimes to people to, to act if it was always there. But, you know, putting the action in helps a lot, but to literally feel it. So if it's something that you are, uh, you know, meant to have and it's meant for you to move in purpose to have and it's, you're moving in purpose and doing what you're supposed to be doing and it's, it's a desire of your heart, you can feel that. You it, can feel that. You can you, feel it coming. You, Yeah, you can feel it from your heart. If you put your hand on your heart and you say, oh, my God, I'm going to, instead of saying, um, um, I want to travel, I am traveling. I'm starting to travel. I'm going to start traveling or whatever the case, however, however you want to say it. You put your hand on your heart and you feel that energy from that. If that's something that you're supposed to have in a desire of your heart, you can feel it. It's there. It's already there. It's just you have to manifest that and create that for it to happen. You know, it's going to happen exactly in the, the right time and that it's supposed to because it's, it's yours. It's already there. It's already <laughs> it's it's, not there in the ether. It's just waiting on you here in the physical. <laughs> and it's like, hello, what took you so long? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Debbie, we only have a, a couple minutes left. So I just wanted to uh, open it up to you. If you have anything that you feel that's um, anything in it, that has been inspired in you um, or that you feel right now that you want to uh, 
give our listeners or, or get out to our listeners right now. Go right ahead and, um, and, and lay it out because I just feel like there's just something there. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I just want you guys to know that I love you guys so, 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 so much. And I want you guys to know right now we don't really have time at this particular moment to be uh, against each other, whether it's in, you know, religion, separation, um, race and, and all that that evil 3D dimensional type of stuff. We don't have time right now. We have to create this new earth. We have to work together as a collective, a collective meaning everybody. Once we all come together as a collective, that's when new earth will come here. And we're going to be able to love each other and then wave at our neighbors and say hello and not be so judgmental because the person want to be a certain way. We, we're going to move in love. Everything is going to be done in love. And we're going to we're going to move into this love, peace and joy and harmony and how we really supposed to be before we got programmed. So, you know, a lot of things are about to be exposed, you guys. So you guys um, are going to see all kinds of stuff now um not trying to put fear in anybody's heart because that's not the type of person i am fear love overpowers fear anytime but at the end of the day just prepare yourselves because there are going to be some things that we have to go through you know um you know in the physical there are things that we're going to have to go through because these dark entities and these dark energies have had things in place that is trying to come against what we're doing. But just know we as light beings are way more powerful. Light always overpowers the dark. So people are out here saying different things like, oh, my God, are we going to win? Yes, we're going to win. If you go back and, and look at, you know, and research science, light is always the pow most powerful. You know, if you want to continue to be negative and deal in that negative arena, then that's what you're going to experience. But if you want to experience that blissful lifestyle and want to be able to live in love and, and be able to, you know, be able to be in your house with your doors unlocked without having to worry about someone breaking into your home, then you're going to have to work together as a collective. And it's not going to just, just take me or Christine. It's going to take us as a collective to work. And it's happening faster than we think it is you guys we're woken because people are waking up people are saying okay i'm getting sick and tired of this crap you know this old way of living is not the life for me you know it's got to be something else better out there so that's all i had to say <laughs> yes that was yes. awesome thank you so very much demi baldwin and folks if you want to catch uh, demi baldwin again you can go to well you can go to her instagram page it's love light fairy all one word love light fairy and um, and if you do uh, uh, go there and, and follow her, please drop her a line and say that you heard her on Out of the Box with Christine. She'll 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 know where you cameth from. So um, yes, yes. so <laughs> I so, told you guys this was gonna be lit, you guys. <laughs> like I said, I thank you so much, Christine, for allowing me to come on this radio podcast. My pleasure, my pleasure. And you know, I, this is gonna reach so many people. I know it is. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, absolutely my pleasure and it was a calling uh, as soon as I came across your your page and I just was like oh, oh she's okay yes okay yes okay yes I'll get her on. So uh, again thank you so very much and thank you listeners for tuning in today um, again if you'd like to share the show and this is what it's all about sharing this exciting information um, if you felt really good listening to this show and I know you did um, please feel free to share this you can um, share it on the YouTube video. You can subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Shopify, uh, Google Play, Podbean, all those different uh, outlets. You can subscribe to the show, but definitely share this program with your family and friends and social, get it on social media as well so more people can hear about it. Until next week, as I always say, remember to think outside of the box. Bye for now.